Welcome, Miss Laurie, and all of you girls from New Life. Happy New Year to y'all. Amen. Laurie brings these girls on the first Sunday every month because they like to eat. <laughs> and we let her do that because we love them and we like to have them here. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for today. I thank you for such a wonderful crowd, Father. I thank you that maybe folks have uh, just made a commitment to you that they want to want to do things different in 2015, Father. And Lord, I just ask you to guide everything that we say and do this morning. I ask you for your anointing to flow through this message, Father, that it'll come out exactly the way you want it and only the way you want it, Father. So guide my thoughts and lips and heart, Father, and then speak through me in today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> uh, there's a couple of things I want to say before we get into the message. Um, there's been a rumor floating around, I guess, because everybody keeps asking me. And I say, well, what made you think that? And they say, oh, you know, the rumors. And uh, just, just to put it to rest, uh, it's not my intent to retire anytime soon. Okay? Uh, the, the only way I'm, I'm leaving here in, anytime in the near future is, is uh, if God reassigns me. If, uh, if 50 or 60% of y'all just decide you just absolutely can't put up with me and don't want me anymore, I'll be gone. Amen? And uh, if Jesus comes back uh, and you're here, you won't be seeing me. <laughs> Amen? And, uh, of course, if he takes me home, then y'all will still be here, but I'll be gone. So I have no intention of, of leaving anytime soon. And that may be good news to some of you. It may be bad news to some of you. I don't know. But you better get used to me. Uh, just so you have an idea what to expect, uh, our plans, uh, Dennis and Paula are here, and they're full-time, and that's really, really good news. Uh, and, uh, and I guess that's what made some people think maybe I was going to retire. I even had one nice Christmas card that said, please don't let retiring enter your mind or something like that, which I thought was really sweet, you know. But, uh, but anyway, just so you have an idea what to expect, uh, we expect to uh, keep you guessing as much as possible. <laughs> okay? We've talked about it, and I, it's my personal belief that if, if Dennis did one thing all the time, and if I did one thing all the time, and we stuck to that, then if you like him, you'd come to his, and if you like me, you'd come to mine, and we'd end up having two churches. And how many of you know that we're supposed to be one united church under God? Amen? <laughs> so we've talked about it, and we're going to trade around, and hopefully the Spirit's going to lead us, and, and we'll bounce off of each other, and, and uh, I'll be doing part of the stuff part of the time, and he'll be doing part of the stuff part of the time. We're going to share the responsibilities. Uh, I personally believe that it's going to be somewhat akin to a marriage uh, because uh, my weaknesses, he's going to supply. And if I ever discover any of his weaknesses, maybe <laughs> I'll be able to supply some of that, okay? So I believe that the end result is that you're going to get uh, the best of what God has by both of us being here, okay? And, uh, and we're committed to that. Amen. Uh, but uh, just, just so you'll know, um, Paula's going to be teaching some, uh, some specific courses uh, during the, the Bible study hour from 9 to 10. Uh, we don't know exactly when she's going to start that, but it'll be soon, right? Or the 25th, we decided that at our planning meeting, okay. That, that's why they're here to help me remember things. One of the reasons. But uh, anyway, they're going to be specific things, and they'll be cyclical, and, and we'll repeat them from time to time, and there'll be more than just one, one course. So, and she's an excellent teacher. She's an excellent prayer warrior, and, uh, and she's a part of the team, okay? So uh, you can take advantage of that. We'll continue to have the, uh, the 9 o'clock Bible study, and I'll do it sometimes. Dennis will do it sometimes. I'll preach today. He'll preach some of the times on Sundays, and right now he's going to continue preaching on Wednesdays for a while. But uh, we're going to trade off everything just to keep, it, to keep you guessing, okay? Do y'all like to guess? Do you like to be surprised? Okay, well, that's our intent. Um, 
Anyway, uh, that brings me to the message and the sermon uh, that I believe God wants us to share today. And uh, we, we've done some planning and we're developing a plan for the year. It's still kind of in the works. Uh, but the theme for this year, uh, we're going to start off with the, uh, the uh, mission statement. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this year and where we're going and hopefully get into a, a little sermon. So uh, if you're through, oh, they're ahead of me. Boy, they know where I'm going. Uh, some of you know what our mission is. You've seen it before. Uh, the underlined part there, just for your information, there's a little thing that I added in uh, because I realized that this was kind of sounded like we were only ministering to people that God brought, and we really want to reach out to the community. So I borrowed that from another church that I saw it on and added it in, and I hope that it's all right with everybody. Amen. But our, our mission at Cowboys for Jesus Christian Fellowship is to evangelize the community, ministering love, healing, and salvation to the souls God brings across our trail, and to reach out to our community to give as many people as possible repeated opportunities to experience the love of God. And then after that, we will make disciples of those we reach by teaching them and showing them the true nature and character of God and equip them to do the work of His ministry, thus bringing His kingdom and His righteousness on earth as it is in heaven, which is our great commandment. Amen? So that's what we hope to do. And uh, in order to do that, um, we're going to talk a little bit today about what our, our theme for the year is going to be. So if you'll go to slide two. Our theme for the year is the growth of the body. And by the way, this is uh, one of the uh, weaknesses that I have that uh, Brother Dennis bringing to the table. He's a planner, and I'm a fly by the seat of my britches guy. So uh, it's going to be a good thing to have some help and some encouragement to plan, okay? But uh, the, uh, the growth of the body, and this focuses on growing individually and as a body and maturing in some major areas of our lives beginning with our relationship with God, marriage and family, including parenting skills, uh, and our relationship with our church family, with our friends, and with our neighbors. And this is focused pretty well in Ephesians 4, 15, and 16, which says, But speaking the truth in love uh, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share and causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. That's what we hope to gain through some of the things that Dennis will be teaching and we'll be focusing the preaching in these areas to help us grow individually. We want every one of us to grow in our Christian walk and our Christian life and our relationship with God. And we want our whole church to grow as a body together, okay? Next slide. Uh, no, you didn't uh, skip. That, was, that one's for later. Go to, uh, or, no, that is the right one. Are you willing to make a commitment? How many of you are willing to make a commitment to study, to be faithful, to work on making your relationship grow and prosper in order to fulfill Paul's desire for us in Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, which says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, cowboys for Jesus, to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness, gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Paul encouraged us to do that. He, in fact, I think it's a commandment that he wants us to do that. God wants us to do that. Those are the words of God. Next slide. So how many are ready to sign up for that? Sign on to that. Amen. Amen. Don't raise your hand just because you know it's a thing to do. Raise your hand because you want to make a firm commitment in your heart that you want to grow this year and you want to see this body grow together in unity and fulfill God's purpose for Fisher, Texas. Amen? Amen. Uh, that's what we hope to do. Uh, so with that, that was the last one, wasn't it? With that, I want to talk to you about growing in peace and harmony. I want to talk to you about how to enjoy uh, the abundant life. How many of you know John 10.10 10 by heart? Well, you need to learn it if you don't. It's real easy. It's real short. You probably know it. You just don't know the address. There's a lot of scriptures I know, but I don't know when you call 
you know, John 10.10, 10, I don't always know what that says. It says, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil comes only for one reason, that's to make your life miserable. Amen? He comes to distract you from God. He comes to involve you in the world, as we talked about in Bible study this morning, and keep you from seeking first the kingdom of God. The thief does not come for anything except to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you all, we all, may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. Now, I don't care where you are in your Christian walk. I don't care how good your life is. Would you like to have some more? More abundance? If anybody doesn't want to have any more abundance, I want to talk to you after the service. Uh, that's what Jesus said he came for. Now, let's go to uh, Ephesians 4, 1, and let's review that a little bit. As we just read it. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. How many of you know you're called? How many of you are walking as worthy as you possibly can toward that call? Most of us are trying real hard, and most of us are doing fairly good, but I don't know about y'all, but I could do better. I think we all probably could do better. And that's our goal for the year is to do better, okay? Uh, next one. With all lowliness, gentleness, long-suffering, bearing with one another in love. You see, that's, what's the opposite of that? Lowliness, uh, the, the opposite of that is pride and haughtiness. Gentleness uh, is, is meekness, and, and it's the opposite of being brash and, and bold. Long-suffering is, is the opposite of, of being impatient and wanting it right now. Uh, and bearing with one another means if you're not there yet, I'm going to love you anyway, and I'm not going to get mad at you, and I'm not going to judge you, and I'm not going to scold you. I'm going to bear with you knowing that the same blood of Jesus that took away my sin takes away your sin. And that if I just give you time, Jesus will clean you up. Amen. It's not up to me to clean you up, okay? It's up to him. It's up to me to try to equip you to do the work of the ministry. It's up to me to try to teach you how to be a better Christian if you so desire to do so. And if you don't desire it, I can't make you, okay? And, and I'm about to learn not to try, okay? Sometimes we get overexcited and we try to make you be a better Christian, but that's not the right way. We're supposed to show you and then if you want to, we'll help you, but you have to make that decision to, to do it on your own. Next verse. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. What is the unity of the Spirit? It's all being the same mind. It's all having the same heart. It's all having the same purpose, which is Him, and to focus on Him and His kingdom. The unity is a strong thing. If we could all get united, there's no telling what God could do. There's so many things that if we all got it, God could turn the world upside down, starting right here in Fisher, Texas. Amen? And we need to get there. And the, and, and the unity of the Spirit bonds us together in peace. And that's part of our goal, too. Next one. There's one body, one spirit, just as we're called, in one hope of your calling. If we just get to be one, God's going to move, and he's going to move more. He's moved a lot. We've had a lot of people that have had their lives changed, that are on a growth path, that are serving God and working hard at it and, and loving each other. And if we can just enhance that some more and keep it going, that's what God wants us to do. One calling. Next one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. See, we're supposed to be one. We're supposed to, to be the parts of the body that work together as one. Next one. One God, one Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. How many of you have the Spirit of the living God living in you? Amen? If you don't, you need to to make that connection today and invite him to come in and be your personal Lord and Savior. And we'll give you an opportunity to do that before the service is over. Next one. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. God gave us each a measure of faith. And, and uh, if you'd have been at Bible study this morning, you'd have learned a whole lot more about that because that's one of the things that we studied. And we have to function in His gift, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and we have to exercise our faith and we have to walk in a manner 
that's consistent with what God wants to do in our lives. Next one. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Uh, that song he sang, he led captivity captive. The devil has to walk through the blood of Jesus to get to you, to attack you, to steal, kill, or destroy. And if you don't know that, and if you don't know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then he's got, he's got free access to you, and he's just going around all the time going, rawr, 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 barking at your heels and talking to your mind and telling you what you're no good and all the things bad about you that you wish you could forget and that aren't true. That's why we have to, to keep together on it. He led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Part of the gifts he gave to men is pastors, teachers, and so forth. The next one. Uh, he ascended means that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He went down and freed the ones that were in hell or in purgatory, wherever it was, and he, he brought them up. And then he went up to be at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. When, when the devil's gnashing at your heels and talking to you and your brain and he's telling God all the bad stuff you've done, Jesus is sitting there next to his daddy, the judge, saying, Dad, yeah, old Jerry, you know, you, you know him. I mean, you saw it. He did it. Yeah, he's guilty. But I've already paid the penalty. I've already paid the price. I shed my blood for that. I died for him. He's standing there just as righteous as I am, Father. He's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And... He's, he's innocent. Even though he did it, he's innocent. That's what we've got to know. And that's what Jesus is doing at the right hand of the Father. Next one. He who descended is all who, also he who ascended above the heavens that he might fulfill all things. He took care of it all. When he finished on that cross, he said, it is finished. And I don't know if you understand it or not, but that means it's over. The song said it. He, he won. He shed the blood. It's over. You have to, the devil has to walk through the blood of Jesus to get to us. But if we don't know it, we're just, we're just out there hanging out for him to have fun with. Next one. And he himself gave some as apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Those are the gifts that he gave to the body. Um, apostles, pastors, evangelists, pastors and teachers. He gave that to, to us to equip us, equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Dennis and, and Paula and Jan and my job is not to go out and do all the work and do minister to everybody out here. Our job is to equip you and get you excited enough about God and get you trained up in the scriptures and get you mature and grow up so that you're ministering to each other and you're ministering to everybody else that's out there that, that we can get our hands on, that we can find, that God brings in here, that we go out to the trail rides or the trail ride uh, spaghetti dinners that we have for the trail rides, which is coming up very soon in, in, in February and, and March. Uh, and, and we need a lot of help doing that. Till we all come to the unity of the faith of the and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. We've got to learn and understand the character and nature of God in order to fulfill our purpose and destiny. And that's, that's part of our mission is to help people. There's so many misunderstandings in this world about God's character. People are living in stories that they, they heard growing up. They're, they're living on stories that they heard from, from the devil in some cases, from uh, well-intentioned but untaught and untrained people, uh, things they heard here and there, helter-skelter, and they're not true. They're not correct about God. They don't have a correct image of God and His love. God is love. All of us have heard that, haven't we, that God is love? But if you don't understand what love is, then you don't understand God. And if you don't understand that God can't violate what He is, He has to act in love. He acts in justice too. But He is love. And if we figure that out, then we can grow and we can, we can uh, fulfill our, our destiny. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You know what that means? That means the blood of Jesus makes us perfect in God's eyes. And we can grow up and Jesus can flow through us and that love can flow out of us and we can minister to each other. We can minister to the lost. We can pray for the sick. We can do whatever God calls us to do 
uh, if we just have the faith to do it and have a little bit of, of courage to step out in an uncomfortable area and say, God, you know, they tell me that you just need a body and here's mine. I don't know much, but I'm going to step out and I'm going to listen for your voice and I'm going to trust you. And if I think I'm getting a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, I'm going to, I'm going to say it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to act on it. And I'm going to watch you do it. He'll do whatever we have the faith to step out on. Amen? Amen. Next one. That we should no longer, uh oh, y'all want to go through this one? That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Do you know there's a scheme out there? And we're going to, if I get, if I don't get too carried away with this, we're going to talk a little bit about the scheme before we get out of here today. And the Brother Dennis is teaching me that I need to learn to just stop when it's, when it's time to stop, you know, and not try to finish the whole sermon. I'm trying to learn that today. Uh, he, he's going to help me a lot. I don't know where he's going to get his help. Uh, anyway, uh, we got an enemy, folks, and he's alive and well, and he's prowling around like a roaring lion trying to devour you. He's seeking whom he may devour. But if you know who you are, he can't, okay? And our job is to teach you who you are and what he can and can't do and to help you master that and then to help you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and grow up, grow up, okay? We're no longer supposed to be children. You know, if a, if a baby messes in his diaper, you don't think too much about it, do you? Well, when you see a 30 or 40 or 50-year-old man messing in his diaper, you, you kind of think maybe that shouldn't ought to be. And some of us have to be careful. We'll make a mess without even trying to. Amen? Or am I just talking to me? Hello? We all can mess up at any time. Amen? That's why we need to stick together. That's why we need to not judge each other. That's why we need to not criticize when we see somebody make a mistake. We need to, to lift them up. We need to encourage them. We need to to edify them. We need to tell them that that's okay. You know, you just got to put that behind you. And if there's something you need to go make amends for, you go make amends for it. And then you get on with the kingdom business because Jesus paid for our mess ups. Right. Amen? Right. He paid for it all. We don't have to dwell on our mess ups. Today. We can't let the devil beat us up and say, you'll never, you'll never be able to do anything for God again. Anybody ever heard that? It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. God doesn't have a record book keeping track of all of our mess-ups. Do you hear that? You know, some of us go around all the time begging him to forgive us for stuff we did when we was 15 years old. And God's sitting up there scratching his head saying, what in the world is that guy talking about? But, but you see, it doesn't mean when it says he remembers our sins no more, it doesn't mean he doesn't actually remember them. It says he doesn't take them into account he doesn't deal with us according to that. He lets it go. How many of you are real good at letting stuff go when somebody does something to you that you don't like? Better. 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 We're better at it, aren't we? We got to get good at it. We got to get to where we never, we never let it affect us in the first place. And that's a learned skill. And it's also a skill of trusting God, okay? And that's where this... this series is going to go ultimately is to there but I want us to get to the place first where we know that we, we got to grow up some more we got to grow up uh, is there another one but speaking the truth in love and here's the key, one of the keys right here speaking the truth in love you see me mess up don't come jump down my throat you start jumping down my throat and talking harsh to me and my ears stop up and yours do too amen you come with gentleness. You come with the fruit of the Spirit. And you come to encourage me and ask me to pray about what it is you think I did wrong. And, and I'll hear you. And I assure you, if I hear you, I'll pray about it. And I'll say, God, God, did I, did I really do that? Did that really sound that way? Did that really look that way? And, and when he says yes, I'm going to repent. I'm going to say, God, help me to never do that again. I don't want to 
mess in my diapers. I don't want to. I don't want to cause people to stumble. So, so just God help me, help me. Okay, but you gotta, you gotta do it in love. Whatever's not of love is sin. Uh, you gotta do it in love so that we may grow up into all things into Him who is the head, Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, next one. Okay, Psalms 119, verse 165. This is, is the, the theme for the next couple of Sundays probably, okay? Great peace have those who love your word, your law, which is his word, and nothing causes them to stumble. How many of you have stumbled recently even? Daily, even. This verse says that you shouldn't stumble. I'll read it again. Perfect peace have those who love your law or your word, and nothing causes you to stumble. Say, nothing should cause me to stumble. If I love his word, and I'm in it all the time. Now, you can love his word and never open your Bible, and I think you'll be stumbling, okay? Because if you love it, you'll be in it Amen. all the time. Every opportunity you get, you'll be doing some regular studies, some regular uh, getting in there and reading it and memorizing and meditating on it. If you love it, that's what you'll do. How many of you love his word? How many of you are going to do more getting in it? Amen. Amen. How many of you are going to start coming to 9 o'clock Bible study on Sunday morning that hadn't been coming? Amen? Hello? I didn't hear that. I don't know what you said. Uh, <clears throat> it's okay. Uh, you know, even in, I didn't put it in there. It's not up there. But Psalms 133 says, How good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Amen. Unity is when you don't get mad at me, no matter what I do. Unity is when I don't get mad at you, no matter what you do. I can see you do the biggest mess up in the world and I can say, well, you know, you're growing and, and I used to do that and, and a lot of other people do that and I know that there's going to be a time when you quit doing that and it's up to God. to I can point it out to you in love and say, you know, have you, have you thought about how that might affect people that are knowing you're a Christian and looking at your life? And, 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 and that's all I need to say. And if you say no, I'll say, well, I'm going to pray for you then. That God will show it to you. Unity is caused by you not holding anything against anybody. Anybody got a problem with that? Nobody has a problem with that? Wow. Okay. So, uh, what's the biggest obstacle to the abundant life? The biggest obstacle single obstacle. There are many and this one is not, you know, you can't go to scripture and say, hey, it says this is the biggest one. But one of the biggest ones, sin's correct, but there's, there's a particular thing. Uh, look at James 4.1. And this is probably one that you've read and seen and it's one that you talk about somebody else and say, yeah, they need to hear this. But guess who needs to hear it? Huh? Us. Okay? Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do y'all have any wars and fights? Are y'all here today? Okay. Uh, do, they come, do they not come from your desire for pleasure that you war in your members? You know, nearly everything that, that causes a, a conflict comes from one of us wanting some pleasure, wanting something that we want. Amen? That's what this is saying. You lust, you do not have, you murder, you covet, and you cannot obtain. And most of us read that and we say, well, you know, I don't lust much and I don't covet and you know, I don't murder. And, and so we just pass right over it. But what it's talking about is self-centeredness. That's what it's talking about. Uh, you murder, you covet, you, can't, you cannot obtain. You fight in war, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may consume it on your own pleasure. Hello? 
That, none of y'all fit that, right? Y'all don't, y'all don't do that? Uh, adulteresses and adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world, you know that all those things that you want that you don't need and aren't supposed to have are coming from the world, right? So if that's you and you're self-centered and you're letting the world dictate what the things you want and what you do and you look at all those advertisements and say, I got to have that, you know, and I got to go get a better car and I got to go do this. And by the way, I'll be getting another car, but it's not because I want to get a better one. It's because my transmission's out and the car's not worth fixing, so... Uh, anyway, I don't want you to think that I was lusting for a new car. And I'm not going to get a new one either. So, uh, But uh, or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us is jealous. God wants your full and undivided attention. He doesn't want you to be a selfish, self-centered person that's only interested in yourself. He wants you to be interested in him. He wants you to be relating to Him. He wants you to be listening to Him and working for and through Him. Amen? He's jealous. He wants our full undivided attention. How many of you would like a spouse that never talked to you and never listened to you and never was around when you, when you wanted them to do something for you? How long would you stay married to somebody like that? Oh, wait a minute. That might be stepping on somebody's toes. I don't know. Hello? But God wants us to, to be devoted to him. He wants us to, to seek his king, him and his kingdom first. Right. And if we're not doing it, we're not happy as we ought to be. Some of us are, are unhappy and bordering on depression and, and uh, having issues with life. And we, we just, we're just miserable. Anybody in here, don't raise your hand. But if you're just miserable some of the time, it may be because God's jealous for you and you're ignoring him. Or maybe he's got a specific purpose for you and you're running from it. You can't run from God. Wherever you go, he's there. The best thing to do is just, there's a song that says, when everything goes wrong, I just throw up my hands. Throw up your hands and surrender and say, God, whatever you want, I accept. You know? And, and help my unbelief and, and give me, if, if I don't have the desire to do it, God, give me the desire. Uh, I heard a preacher pray was saying one time. He said, "He said if you don't if you don't have the desire, say God, give me the desire, and then I'll do it." He will. He will answer your prayer. He will answer your heart's desire. Anyway, uh, the basic problem. You know what the basic problem is? I think you know. I'll just tell you what my basic problem is. My basic problem is I want what I want when I want it. If I'm not walking in the Holy Spirit. And I know every one of y'all has got some of that in you. I want what I want when I want it. You know what the other problem is? If you get in my way of getting it, I get offended. And even if you didn't get in my way of getting it, if I think you got in my way of getting it, I get offended. And you know who I get offended at? <laughs> Whoever it is that got in the way. Whoever it is, I connect with me not getting what I wanted, when I wanted it. If you think about that long enough, you're going to realize that there's some of that in you. And I believe that offense, being offended is one of the major, major, major causes of disunity in our homes, in our families, in our marriages, and in the body of Christ. We do not know how to deal with offenses. And that's what I'm going to be teaching on for the, at least the next couple of weeks. And, uh, and then we're going to see where it goes from there. But... Uh, Luke, uh, Luke 6.32. I'm going to have to get my cataracts fixed. I can't see the clock. So if I keep going, Dennis, it's because I can't see the clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Luke 6, 32. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who give them what they want when they want it. Uh, if you do good to those that do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. See, it's easy to love those that love you. And when you're getting your way all the time and somebody's just, you know, buttering up to you and letting you have your way all the time, it's easy to love them, isn't it? But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good lending. Help, hoping for nothing in return. That's one of our biggest problems too is when we do something good for somebody, we hope for something good in return. If I lend you some money, I want interest back with it. And if I go out and fix your flat tire in the rain on, a, on 2 o'clock in the morning and, or take you home or do something like that that really puts me out, I'm going to expect you to do something good for me whether it's convenient for you or not whenever I need it. And that expectation... If I come to you and I say, hey, help me with this, and you say, well, I don't have time. Well, I had time for you when you needed it. Well, I'm sorry, I just don't have time. I can't do that for you today. I'm offended because I'm not getting what I want when I wanted it, and I paid for it in advance. So do it without expecting anything back in return, okay? Don't, and when you do something good for somebody, don't think you're paying in advance for some favor from them. That's what God's talking about. There's a whole lot about offenses that we've got to learn. And uh, when, when you let something offend you, how, do you know that when, how many of you have been offended? <laughs> how many of you have been an offendor? See, that's all of us. But we don't, I don't think we fully know the consequences of those offenses. We just don't get it. We don't understand it. And I think we have to, if we're going to, if we're going to be successful in our theme going forward for this year, if we're going to be successful at growing in the Lord, we have to learn how to deal with offenses. We have to learn, first of all, not to let anybody offend us. And it's a choice. I don't care what they do to you. Assume that they're ignorant. Assume that they didn't do it intentionally. There's, there's so many different types of offenses, and we're going to talk about the different types of offenses and the effect that they have on us. And, uh, in fact, I have... Uh, the, the, the next message is going to be about the consequences of offenses, okay? The consequences of offenses. And if you go back and look at historical figures in the Bible, they did some offending, being offended, and they had some serious consequences. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to help you understand that, that when you let somebody offend you, there's a consequence. In fact, that word offend, if you look it up, it's, it's a trap. It's actually the, the, uh, the mechanism that triggers the trap to close. The offense is the bait that's on that trigger, okay? And it either catches you in a... I'm going to bring a trap next week and show you and demonstrate it, okay? And that's where we're going to go. But um, it goes down to, to verse 37... Uh, and, and this is Dennis just got through preaching a series on seed time and harvest, and this is absolutely right there. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men will will be put into your bosom. For with uh, the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. That's seed time and harvest. We use that a lot for, for tithes and offerings and for money, but it applies to everything. If you get offended easily, there's always going to be somebody there to offend you. And if you let it offend you, it's going to keep coming. It's going to keep coming. If you're the offender, then people are going to be offending you. Whatever, whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. And if you can learn to not let anything offend you, then then you'll stop being offended. And it'll roll off your back just like water off a duck's back. But if you like being offended and you let it happen and you spread it around and you tell everybody what somebody did to you and offended you, you're just spreading it around. And you're locking it in and sealing it into yourself and you're letting that trap spring tighter and tighter and tighter. Amen? That's just a little sample about where we're going. Anybody know if lunch is ready? Nobody knows. Richie's going to see. There's no need in me getting through before lunch is ready, okay? 
And by the way, if you're visiting today, even if you're a visitor that, that used to be here and you hadn't been here for 10 years or more, you're still counted as a visitor and you still get to go to the front of the line for lunch. And I'll go with you so I can fellowship with you. <laughs> Amen? Anyway, uh, our basic problem is selfishness. Luke 17, verse 1. Then he, he, Jesus, said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. See, it's one thing to be offended. It's another thing to be the offender. Uh, it's impossible that no offenses should come. But woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea, then that he should offend one of these little ones. How many of y'all are one of his little ones? I'm one of his little ones too, okay? And I always tell everybody, you know, I do have feelings. But I refuse to let you offend me. Okay? I mean, I am learning that lesson, and I have made tremendous strides and I'm real hard to offend. I'm not hard to upset for a minute, but you know sometimes it takes a minute to put it down. But but you're 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 gonna have to work really hard to offend me. Five minutes? I don't know if I can talk that long or not. <laughs> Verse two: It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck, and he were thrown into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you or, or messes with you or does something you don't like or hurts you or offends you, whatever your brother does, that's what it's talking about. Take heed to yourselves if your brother sins against you. Rebuke him in love. It doesn't say in love, but he said in another place, he said, whatever you do, you've got to do it in love. Rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Now I submit to you, if you don't want to be offended, you just forgive him anyway, whether he repents or not, okay? That's the way you avoid offense is you just forgive. First, first thing you do is assume that they didn't, that they did, you misunderstood them. Second thing you assume is that they're ignorant and they don't know any better. Third thing is that they've been offended and so they're trying to offend somebody else to get even or maybe you offended them and you don't know it and they're getting back at you. There's a whole myriad of ways that you can blow it off with an assumption, and, and sometimes we're perceiving it wrong anyway. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. There's no option there, okay? It doesn't say if you want to, if you feel like it, if he apologizes sweet enough, if you think he's sincere. No, he doesn't say any of that. He just says, you shall forgive him. So when I mess up, even if you think I'm going to do it again, you got to forgive me. Hello? We have to learn to deal with offenses. And there's a whole lot of things that I think we can learn around this. How many of you figured out already that, how many of you knew it when you came in here, that, that being offended is a trap? It hurts you. It's like, it's like drinking poison. You offend me, and I'm hurt, and I drink poison hoping you'll die. Only it's, it's worse than that because it's a slow death. You put yourself in a cage. You put yourself in a trap. You put yourself in bondage, and you're just miserable, and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And it leads to places you don't want to go, and it leads to places where you can't really serve God effectively. And we got to draw the line and shut it down. Amen? Now, I don't know if there's anybody here that, uh, that has never trusted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, but I want to give you that opportunity today. If you're here today, and you've never, you don't know if you died tonight if you'd go to heaven or not. 
A lot of people question, even if they've prayed a prayer or they've done this or that. Some people question all the time. The devil will tell them, no, you ain't saved. Look at how you act. Look at what you do. You ain't saved. You think you're saved? You think you're going to go to heaven? Ha! That's the devil's tactic. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came and paid the price for all the sin, all the things that you've ever done in your life that, that the devil will tell you will keep you out of heaven. There is nothing that will keep you out of heaven that you could have done unless you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, whatever that means. And I think it means that when the Holy Spirit keeps coming to you and say, hey, Jesus wants you to get saved. Jesus wants you to trust Him. Jesus is calling you to come to Jesus to get your sins forgiven. Jesus is calling you. I think blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is continuing to say no to that until the day you die. That's what I think blaspheming the Holy Spirit is. So if you haven't, if you aren't dead yet, you still have an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and trust in Him that the blood of Jesus will take care of your sin. Amen? So if that's you and you would like to settle that issue once and for all, sometimes we pray an if-never-before prayer for people who think they might have been saved but they're just not sure. You only have to pray a, a prayer accepting Jesus one time. It lasts forever. Once you're adopted into the family, you don't get disadopted, okay? So you pray that prayer one time. You pray it in faith, and then you choose to believe that God means what He says and that He forgave your sins and that you'll be with Him in paradise. So if that's you and you've never trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you want to nail it down today, you want to drive a stake in the ground and say, hey, I prayed at that cowboy church to accept Jesus and I'm going to remember the date and I'm going to drive a stake in the ground and I'm never going to doubt my salvation again. If that's you, raise your hand right where you are. Amen. There's one, there's two. Anybody else, anywhere? Well, amen, amen. Well, I want you just to pray this prayer with me. If you mean it in your heart, God's going to save you and He's going to wash all your sin away. He's going to cover and take away your sin. Amen? So just say, Father, if never before, right this minute, I choose to trust You as my Lord and Savior. I thank You, Jesus, for forgiving my sin, for dying on that cross, as the payment for my sin. And I receive it right now. And I just ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to guide and direct my life. In fact, Lord, I just turn my life over to you right now. You take me and you cause me to, to want to serve you. You cause me to, to know what you want me to do and then you help me do it because I surrender to you right now. I want your life to be my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now if you prayed that prayer, I got to tell you what happened to you. The instant that you prayed that prayer, if you met it in your heart, you became a whole new person. Everything that's happened to you before today is, is gone. And that's not even the best part. The best part is, is that everything you mess up from here on, he doesn't hold it against you. He says, he says, he forgave your sins past, present, and future. It doesn't mean you just go out and sin because when you go do things that are wrong, you have consequences. But he doesn't hold it against you, okay? It doesn't interrupt. Nothing will separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Neither heights, nor depths, nor powers, nor principality, nor things present, nor things past. Nothing can separate you ever again from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? And that applies to all of us if we've trusted Him as our Lord and Savior. Nothing can separate you. Not even an offense. It can't separate you, but it can make you miserable. Amen? It can make you miserable. There's a lot of things that it can make you, and we're going to talk about some more of them next week, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise and you come back. Amen? Amen. Amen. So how do you know when you've been in a cowboy church? Yeah, when the preacher says, you'll come back now, you hear? Amen?